Hi everyone, I hope you're safe and well. I wanted to share with you some of my favourite blocks from the lovely Daryl and Renee Osborne at Hat Blocks Australia. So grab a cuppa, have a seat and I hope you enjoy this video. The first block I'd like to share is the number 517. Each block on Daryl's website has its own catalogue number and I've included these as an easy reference. The 517, often referred to in vintage fashion as the coolie or conical hat, was very popular in the late 1940s and early 1950s and was immortalised by Dior in 1947 as part of his new look. Whilst Dior's hat had a flat top and Darrell's block has a point, the pointed top was also very popular during this era and is one of those vintage styles that is just timeless. Here is a tilt hat I created using this block in black straw with embroidery trim. The block is available in three sizes. Mine is the smallest at 16 inches. It also comes in an 18 inch and 20 inch size. The next thing I wanted to talk about are block stands. The one in the center is Daryl's standard block stand. The one on the left is a custom stand Daryl put together for me at very short notice, which is why it's so plain to look at. But it works like a beauty. I needed a tall stand that allowed me to block without having to bend over so much. It's easy to forget that blocking can be quite strenuous. It's a physical activity, so anything that helps it to be more ergonomic, as far as I'm concerned, is a bonus. The stand on the right is one that Daryl made for me specifically for sources and big blocks. Using this stand, it lets me stretch whatever I'm blocking under the block without having to lift the block and it also means I can easily rotate the block around when I need to. So this is such a godsend. And personally, I think sometimes block stands are just as important as the blocks themselves. Anyone who knows me knows I love to use vintage blocks. But the one really frustrating thing about that is the size of the stand hole underneath a vintage block is often so much bigger than that of modern blocks so the stands don't fit. I asked Daryl to make me three beautiful custom block stands to fit specific vintage blocks that I had that I use a lot of the time. Again, I asked for the stands to be a lot higher than the regular stand so I don't have to bend as much when I'm blocking. And I have to say, I am really pleased with these stands. I certainly didn't expect them to be so lovely to look at. They're very practical. They give me exactly the stability I need when I'm blocking my vintage blocks. So a big thanks to Dale and Renee for that. This photo was taken by Renee as a work in progress shot for me. So between this photo being taken and the blocks arriving, they were varnished beautifully. The block you can see in this photo is a custom block Daryl did for me and I'll be touching on that later in this video. The next block I'd like to share with you is one that I actually think is pretty special. It's the domed brim and skull cap block that comes with a presser. Firstly, we have the block with the skull cap on it with the presser to one side. Now you can take the skull cap off remove the pin that holds it in place and then you have a beautiful curved dome block to block on its own. Pop the pin back in, pop on the skull cap and you have a beautiful domed block with the skull cap centered in the middle. However, this is just where the magic starts. So if we take a look at the block from above, you can see that there are actually eight different holes that the pin can be placed into so that gives you eight positions that you can have the skull that you can have the skull cap on the block as the pin moves down the block you can see that the skull cap moves away from the center slowly down to the side 
Once you've decided where you want that skull cap to sit, you can use the presser to get a really nice smooth block over that skull cap. Here is a photo of a custom hat I did as a commission. I didn't use the skull cap in this case, I just blocked the beautiful dome block and covered it completely in custom dyed feathers with embroidery on the inside. But then I thought, you know what? I haven't used that little presser yet. And I've got an idea of what I can do. So what I did was rather than using the presser on the skull cap on the block, I blocked the presser itself and came up with this really cute little hat. So not only do you have a dome block with a skull cap that you can sit into eight different places that comes with the presser, you can use the presser as a fascinator. So I'm really thrilled with this block and it's something that I use a lot. You can see that I've got the domed block sitting on the flat, large broom stand that I spoke about earlier. And even though this block does have a blocking channel in it to put a cord or a coil around, I still find it easier to block if it's raised up slightly from the bench top or the table surface. The depressor number 528 is a really interesting block and you can create some really lovely hats with it. As you can see, there are three circles to the block with curves and the presser allows you to get a really nice blocked hat with it. Here is a hat I blocked in cinema, which I finished off with feathers and lovely flowers underneath. Now to mount this hat as a head fitting, I decided to use another one of my favourite blocks from Daryl, which is the headband block, which I do touch on a little later along. But I find the combination of these two blocks enabled me to create a really lovely hat that had an adjustable head fit so that I could custom fit it for my client. Number 1807 is the Morgana block. This block is a 1940s style that is designed to either sit high at the back of the head or to sit at a slightly more horizontal angle. Now this block comes in two parts, the brim and the little crown that sits on top. In the photos you can see there is a presser. The presser is not part of a regular order for a Morgana block. I requested Daryl make me a presser. As you can see from this photo, the shape of the block is more tapered to the back and it is larger at the front. Very, very 40s style. Now the gorgeous thing about this block is the fact that it's in two parts. I love this block, not just because of the name, I actually really love this style. So I said to Daryl, can you make me a mini Morgana? Mini Morgana? which he very kindly did, and here it is. Daryl is very clever. You will notice that the crown on the mini Morgana on the left is deeper than the crown for the regular Morgana on the right hand side. Yet each crown will fit both blocks, which is fantastic because it means I can take the crown off one block and put it on the other one and switch it around which makes it incredibly versatile. Here is a hat I created on the Mini Morgana block. Here is a felt capoline I blocked on the regular size Morgana. This is a really fun block. It's a really, really fun block. Ray, number 1813, is another really interesting vintage shape. I love the waves on this block. It can be a little bit tricky to use, but with patience and perseverance, you will create something absolutely amazing. Here is a work in progress. It's unfinished, as you can see, but I really love the way it sits on the head at that lovely angle with those soft curves. It's a very, very stylish block. Something I really appreciate with Daryl at Hat Blocks Australia 
is his ability to create custom blocks. Now this hat has an interesting story. I purchased a quite wounded vintage hat and very, very, very carefully unpicked the stitching to reveal the cardboard lining, lining which was very, very common for that period of vintage hat. From that cardboard lining, I recreated it in Buckram and said, Daryl, please make me a block in this shape. And here's the result, the lovely block he created. I love this very 40s shape, much wider at the sides, quite narrow at the back. It's an absolute classic shape. This little tiny block is also a custom block. This one was designed by the lovely Renee Osborne. And as you can see here, I've blocked that in felt to use as the crown on top of my custom block. And I think it gives a really lovely result. This sweet little block is called the Audrey number 1808. This talk shape is a reproduction of a 1930s National Chicago Block Company block and it's gorgeous. Now some of the vintage block shapes can be a little tricky to block, however not this one because it's a puzzle block, yay! I love my puzzle blocks. This is also another block that I like to use the blocking coil from Torben and Reiner. Sits really nicely on it. As you can see from the side of the block, it does go up to a point. So I do put one or two pins there. But other than that, with the blocking coil, I don't need any other pins. I've had a few people say to me, that's a great shape, but how do you block the top of it? Well, it's pretty easy actually. Even though there's no presser, and you don't really need a presser, I find, the, I find the best way to block the side point on this hat is just make sure that whatever you're blocking is quite moist either with steam or with water. I tend to block felt a lot so I make sure my felt uh, is, is quite moist and then I just put it in my lap. It's already got the blocking coil on it and I just sit there and I massage the shape into place either watching television or uh, listening to the radio it can actually be a really relaxing thing to do. Number 1816 is the Betty. This style, circa late 1950s, maybe a little early 1960s, is a gorgeous shape and it's really, really comfortable. Apologies, the only one I had to hand was in black. That's my personal hat, which makes it a little hard to see the shape of it. So I've included an extra photo of it, which I blocked for a client in a beautiful blue. You can see from the reproduction, Daryl has very cleverly made a presser for the top of this block, which makes it really easy to use. It's a really easy style to wear. It's very comfortable and it's a great little shape. The Lauren number 1803 it's a reproduction of a, of a beautiful American block circa 1940s. Initially, this block seems to stump a few people when they look at the shape and they're not really sure what to do with it. And that's because this block, like a lot of other vintage blocks, you block a lot further down to what you think you're going to need and then those bottom sections get tucked up inside the hat. So here is a photo of a hat I created using this block. And if you actually count the crescents, you've got the one at the top, one in the middle, one underneath that, and then that's the end of the hat. And then if you compare it to the block, one, two, three, and you'll see there's that band around the bottom. You do actually block that. You just don't see it because it gets tucked up into the hat. Fortunately, this is also a puzzle block, otherwise it would be near impossible to get the felt, the straw, whatever you're blocking on it off that block. I have some other vintage blocks that oh, I just wish were puzzle blocks, but they're not. So when you get a block like this, that can be a bit of a creative challenge and it is a puzzle block. It's such a bonus, it's such a relief. 
So thinking back earlier in this video, when I talked about the beautiful Dion large brim with the presser, and mentioned that I like to put a bando or headband shape underneath it. This is the one I use. It's the Elizabeth, which is from the Rebecca Share series, number R04. It's simple, it's classic, it's timeless, and it's very versatile. Personally, I don't make a lot of headbands as headbands, but I do make a lot of headbands to put underneath saucers and big brim hats, and I find this fits beautifully. You've heard me talk about some of the blocks Daryl offers, which are reproductions of vintage original blocks. Daryl also offers an excellent block reproduction or copying service. Now, why would you want to get a hat block copied? I can think of a couple of reasons. Here is a beautiful French vintage block that I bought some years ago. I absolutely adore it, but I'm absolutely also terrified of dropping it. So I had Daryl copy it for me. So I was able to put the original back on the shelf. It can just sit there. It looks great. I can block the copy to my heart's content. I don't have to worry about damaging it. I don't have to worry about anything happening to it. Worst case scenario, something happened to the reproduction. I've still got the original on my shelf. Here's another sweet little French vintage block I had reproduced. Again, it was quite a fragile block. Also, it had become damaged over the years as it was used. So it's not shown in this photo, but underneath, there is nowhere to put the blocking stand. So I had Daryl copy it for me with the ability to put it on a stand. Here's another example of a block Daryl copied for me. The block on the left, which is the original block I picked up from Germany, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous block. It's tiny. I'm not sure whether it was a child's block or just a very small block. And the hat actually fits me because I have such short hair, but it's not going to fit anybody else. So I sent it to Daryl and said, Daryl, please, can you upsize this block for me? I would just like to take it up one size to start with. And that's what he did which is great because now it's a lot more versatile because it's a bigger size. Another subject I feel really passionate about because some of my favorite blocks, including the one you can see here, when I bought this block, it was in very, very poor condition. And I knew that when I bought it and the friend who sourced it for me overseas in Europe sent me a photo of this block and said, look, I know it's in really poor condition, but I also know you know someone who's really good with hat blocks. Are you interested in this block? Can you get it repaired? And even though it was, it was very much in a sorry state, I love the shape of this block. It is so gorgeous. So I bought it and I sent it to Daryl can you please do something with this block? And what he did is amazing. Daryl did offer to stain the replacement parts of this block so that it was all the same color. But I said, no, I really like it that you can see exactly how this block has been repaired. So there was so much missing on this block. And again, these are work in progress photos and then you can also see the photos in my studio. Daryl did such a great job. You can't really tell. Well, okay, you can tell because of the color, but it, besides the color, if you close your eyes and you run your finger over that block, you cannot tell where the joins are, where the new pieces have been put in. It's just, I'm so impressed with Daryl fixing this block. One of the things I really like about Daryl and Anae is their strong business ethic. If you buy a block from Hat Blocks Australia and you have any problems whatsoever with the block, Daryl will look after you and sort it out. Yes, full disclaimer, 
I'm making this video because I'm a fan. But I'm a fan because of the excellent customer service I get from Hatblocks Australia. I've had blocks arrive that were damaged in transit, which is absolutely not the fault of Daryl and Renee. Renee is a top class, high level packer. I'm so impressed at the way she packs blocks, but sometimes circumstances out of control, a block will arrive. It's a little cheap or a little damage, no problem. Send it back, back. Daryl will look after you. I know Daryl and I put a lot of time and effort into researching and designing their blocks. I know that some of their blocks are reproductions of vintage blocks. And I also know that those reproductions are either blocks that Daryl owns or blocks that Daryl has permission to copy. For example, the Betty block, which is one of my blocks, too cute to hoard. So I'm very happy for Daryl to reproduce that and sell it on his site. But if you turn around and say, hey, Daryl, I saw this really cool block on the internet. Can you make it for me? The answer will probably be short answer, no. Long answer, I won't copy it exactly, but hey, let's come up with a design based on that block. Daryl is more than aware, not only of international copyright laws, but of the hard work that goes into designing and making blocks. He's a block maker. So if you turn around and say, hey, I saw, I saw this really cool block from this overseas block maker. Can you make it for me? Daryl will say, if you really like that block, buy it from the guy that designed and makes it. Don't ask me to make a copy. As milliners, it's really disappointing and it can be heartbreaking when we see someone knocking off designs that we've put a lot of time and effort and sometimes money into. And the same can be said about block makers. So if you really like Daryl's blocks, buy them from Daryl. Don't get someone to copy them for you as a cheap knockoff. Because if we don't support our block makers, then one day when we really need them and we turn around for their help, they're just not gonna be there. So there's my little soapbox moment. But hey, you know, if you got along this far in the video, I figure I could probably slip on it. I just wanted to show the fabulous stainless steel blocking spring I've mentioned a couple of times, which is available from Torben and Rhino. The smaller circle is the standard size. The large one is a custom spring Lindsay made for me. So that'll go around my large broom blocks. So there you have it. My current favorite blocks from Daryl and Renee at Hat Blocks Australia. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a great day. Bye, happy blocking.